Hey everybody, this is MV Arts. Today we're gonna create a 2D face rig for characters in Blender. In the LEGO Kid Flash movie, I did almost two years ago now, I used the UV wrap modifier to animate the LEGO character's face. Oh, for real? <laughs> uh, what up, Central City? The name's Kid Flash! We might already know a few other techniques to make a 2D face rig, like using programs as After Effects to animate a face animation and export to Blender. But most of the time, these are texture based solutions. Today, we're making a 2D face rig that is mesh based. This has many advantages, the main two being instant feedback while animating and editable shapes right here in Blender. At the end of this video, I give you a bonus tip on how to mix the face meshes with your character in a non destructive manner. Let's get into it. I prepared a mesh that contains several eye shapes and place it in its position on the face. So, the first thing we need to do is to make some vertex groups. So, if I isolate this mesh, I can go into the object data tab and add a vertex group. I go into edit mode and I call this one neutral eye. All right, so then I have to hide the rest. Now, select all that is left and assign weights to this vertex group. Alright, make a new one and I call this one happy eye. Go back into edit mode, shift H to hide all the other meshes and again assign weights to it. Now this one is weighted. Ok, we can do this again for the rest of the meshes. Ok, we've assigned all the vertex groups. Now it's time to give the mesh a modifier and we give it a mask modifier. We copy this five times and give the first one the neutral eye vertex group. You can Ctrl C over the vertex group's name and paste it onto the modifier's name. Do that again for the rest of the masks with the remaining vertex groups. Right now they're all hidden and we could animate it by turning off the visibility. Then keyframing the viewport restriction icons. But that can get quite messy of course. If you need to keep track of which ones are on and which ones are off, and even more so, you have to set 5 keyframes every time. If we can put in some extra work right now, we can get the same result while keyframing only one property. So I go out of isolation mode, I select the rig. I go into the armature tab and I want to make a custom property. I want to edit this one because I want to rename it to I write. Then we have to edit the settings to be more intuitive. I set it to 1. Changing this to 1 will eliminate the decimals while scrubbing through the property slider, snapping it to whole numbers instead. I want them to start at 1 and end at 5. Now we're gonna add a driver to the first mask. I hit all the other meshes so it's easier to look at. We're gonna add a driver to the restriction for the viewport. How we're gonna do that is simple. Right click on the eye, add driver and manually create later. Okay, split up your viewport, hit shift F6 to go into the graph editor. Switch the mode to drivers mode on the bottom and hit N to get this menu. Select the driver here on the left for neutral eye. Open the driver step on the right. The viewport restriction is a simple on and off switch where zero is off and one is on. It might be the other way around. For example, if you have inverted the vertex groups, it would make sense if they're flipped. So we need to tell Blender to set the value here to one when the custom property is set to a certain number. How we're gonna do that is by getting the info from a single property. We have to select the armature. The armature is called rig in this case. From the rig we need to get the data path of the custom property. So go back. We have to unhide of course. Go back into the armature. Go to the custom properties in the armature tab. Right click, copy data path or it's shift ctrl c. Isolate the eye again, 
like I said, it's easier to look at. Click real time neutral eye on the left. Yeah, that is good. And I want to paste the data path here. Perfect. Right now it's set to false. So that means the restriction is off when it's set to true. True should be with a capital T. We only see the neutral eye, but that is no different from toggling it here in the modifier stack, of course. Okay, um, we're going to do a little expression. Nothing to be scared of. I don't know any Python myself, but I figured this one out with the help of the internet. What we're going to do is we have to tell Blender that this value is 1. If in parentheses say var for variable is so equal equal 1. This number 1 here is the value we get from the property and this would change for the other ones of course. So for the happy eye it should be 2, for the blink it should be 3, etc, etc. Then we finish the expression by saying else 0. Now we should be able to drive it from within the custom property. If we go out of isolation mode, go into the armature tab and set value for I write to 2, you might have to refresh the frame. And you see all the other ones are back. We can go back to 1. Again, might have to refresh the frame here, but there it is. Right now it's pretty easy to continue because we can copy this driver and paste it into this one for the render view. Otherwise the face animation won't show up in the render. A quick tip is if you want to check if it's working, all the other restrictions from viewport should be off. Otherwise the mask modifier is flipping out and masking all the meshes all at once. And you won't see anything. Next step is to paste the driver into the happy eyes. It should show here on the left in the graph editor. Select it. And of course, now this is easy, we can change this to 2. Copy the driver to the render restrictions of the happy eye. From here it's rinse and repeat. Now we've set up all the drivers for this eye. The eye can be animated through a custom property. And I know all of you know how to do this. But you have to hit I, go a few frames forward, set it to 2, hit I again. And of course, you have to set the keyframes to a constant interpolation type. I'm gonna clear out this animation and set it back to 1. Refresh the frame and there it is. So go through it and see if it's all working. Okay, I'm gonna set it back to 1 because they're the neutral eyes and they look cute. We could repeat this process for the other eye as well. But what we also could do is get rid of this one and select the left eye. Go into the modifiers tab and collapse all of these. Go into the modifier stack and add a mirror. Mirror it over using a mirror object that is the body. Okay, now we have this. We can apply the mirror, go into edit mode, unhide all, wireframe mode, and select all of these. Hit the P for separation and separate by selection. Okay, I like to set the origin to center of mass, surface, because it's all planes here. Right now we have one custom property that controls both of the eyes. And we want two custom properties to individually control the eyes. That is super easy to do now. Just add a new custom property below the other one, change this property to I left, and edit the rest of the settings so it's the same as before. I copy the data path of the left eye, and I change it in the driver's menu. Work your way through the list and paste the data path over the old data path named I right. Alright, that should do the trick. So now we should be able to individually control both of the eyes. If I set this to 3 and this to 2, they should be different. Yeah, we did it. Very cool.
Okay, I rigged this character by using the mesh deform and binding it to a mesh cage. So, I'm going to do this as well for the eyes. In this case, I use dynamic because dynamic takes into account what the shape keys are doing. So, you can hit bind and bind it to the mesh. And as you see, this is rigged. Do this for the other eye too. The precision is set to 5 because it's just a practice round to see if it's all working. Now, normally I'd set it to 7 for a more accurate deformation. Okay, at the start of this video I promise you a bonus. How do we mix this face mesh with the body of the character in a nice looking manner? It is better to bind the mesh deform after the following steps. For now, unbind them again. I'm gonna do this mouth off screen, or I did it off screen, depends on how you look at it I guess. First we use the shrink wrap modifier to wrap the mesh around the head. We're gonna choose the target and I'm gonna choose the head, or the body in this case. I don't know, I named it body. You can see that it disappears into the head, so we can give it some offset. This is way too much, <laughs> you see? So probably there around 0 0.002. What I like to do is to get a solidify modifier and give the mesh some thickness. To smooth out the mesh, I use a subdivision modifier. There you go! You can play around with the offset, you can play around with the thickness, you can play around with the smoothness. What I like to do, if the mesh is getting too smooth, either apply the solidify and add some support edges in. This would be a destructive way to do it, of course. And it's always nice to be able to tweak things. And don't lose flexibility, of course. So what we could do instead is add a bevel. And you want to add the bevel before the subdivision modifier. I beveled it, but I want to bevel only the angle. That is looking better already. I want to do two segments. With a little bit of tweaking, you can get a nice result that suits your character. <clears throat> right now, it catches a little bit of a highlight, and I really like that. I think it looks cute. If you're done with this, I would say mesh deform. And place the mesh deform on top of the modifier stack. Search for the mesh cage and bind it. If I play it, you can see that the face follows the animation of the head. I messed around with the eyes before I came up with this technique. So you can see that it doesn't work as good as it worked for the mouth, because I already tried to wrap it around the head by hand. And maybe I should not have done that. But that gives me the opportunity to show you one cool thing about this whole technique. And this whole technique is so cool because you can tweak this whole mesh to your liking, and it sticks to the face. Now, I still have some experimenting to do, but I think there are several ways to further tweak the rig. Pupil dilation can be done with shape keys, for example. Also, traditional rigging with bones and bendy bones can be a very good addition to the rig, to get even more out of it. If you would like me to get into this in a follow-up video, Leave a comment whether or not I should elaborate on this. Thank you so much for watching, I really do hope this is useful. Thanks everybody for the nice comments on the previous videos. If you want to see more content in the future, subscribe to the channel. Also, check out these videos you might like. Ciao!